Assalamualaikum and good day. My name is Anas Akmal bin Kasim. I'm a student from Learning Center Manjung Sri Perak. Uh, today I would like to present about mercury poisoning in regard with the Minamata disease that happened in Japan. This is the mercury, mercury properties you can see in the slide in the table showing the details of the mercury properties. Mercury is a heavy metal that is highly toxic to human. Mercury poisoning is the result of being exposed to too much mercury. Consuming food that contain mercury is the common cause of the mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning can cause severe symptoms and put the body at unnecessary risk. This is the use of mercury such as buttons, button cells, battery, coal mining, fluorescent light tube, blood pressure gauge, thermometer and dental amalgam. Mercury life cycle. Mercury being released into the environment, it eventually settles in bodies of water or on land. Whatever settle on the ground can then be washed off into water. Once mercury is deposited into water, microorganisms can transform mercury into a highly toxic form called methylmercury, which accumulates in fish, shellfish, and then the animals that eat those fish and the shellfish. Humans are primarily exposed to mercury in the form of methylmercury by eating fish and shellfish. Methylmercury level is very in different type of this food, so the level of exposure depends on the amount and type of the seafood consumption. The case study on the mercury poisoning, the case number one, six member family exposed to mercury vapor from elemental mercury into the home from school by an elder sister. Three children subsequently presented with signs and symptoms whose onset occurred at different times, mimicking an infectious disease rather than toxic outbreak but which was subsequently diagnosed as mercury poisoning. The case study number two on the mercury poisoning is worker at the land recycling facility were exposed to mercury in the air, had elevated urine mercury levels and experienced signs and symptoms of mercury toxicity. Previous investigations have reported that 33% of mercury is released from bulk in the first eight hours after breakage and that processing is an open area decreases exposure. The risk for mercury exposed in the manufacturing of fluorescent lamp has been known since in the first investigation of fluorescent lamp manufacturing in 1965 reported elevated urine mercury levels among lost blower who made and repair lamp. A case study reported membranous neuropathy and elevated mercury levels in two workers at the fluorescent lamp recycling facility and two studies have been demonstrated level of mercury vapor exceeding OSHA permissible exposure limit during processing of fluorescent lamps. The health effect on the mercury exposure. Mercury may affect the nervous system leading to the neurological system such as nervousness of or anxiety, irritability or mood changes, numbness, memory problems, depression and physical tremors. As the level of mercury in the body rise, most, more symptoms will appear. This symptom may vary depending on a person's age and exposure level. Adults with mercury poisoning may experience symptoms such as muscle weakness, metallic taste, in their mouths, nausea and vomiting, lack of motor skill, inability to feel in their hand or other area, changes in vision, hearing or speech, difficulty breathing, difficulty walking or standing straight. Mercury can also affect a child earlier development. Children with mercury poisoning may show symptoms such as impaired motor skill, problem of thinking or problem solving, difficulty learn to speak or understanding language, issues with hand-eye coordination and being physically unaware of their surrounding. Exposure to high level of mercury may also put a person at risk for long-term com long complications including neurological damage, reproductive effect and cardiovascular risk. The environmental effect on the, uh, on the mercury is water pollution. Water pollution refers to the additional to the water of excess of material that is harmful to human animals and fish. The material found in water and considered toxic to fish and other sea animals in one way or another can be recognized in oxygen debilitating materials, toxic gases, toxic ergonomics compounds, and pesticides. The concentration of fresh water with a wide range of pollutants has become a matter of concern over the last few decades. The natural aquatic system may be extensively contaminated with the heavy metal released from domestic, industrial mining, and other man-made activities. Air pollution. Very small amount of metallic mercury released into the enclosed space can raise in air concentration of mercury to level that may be harmful to health. The longer people breathe the contaminated air, the greater the risk to their health. Legal action taken for the Minamata disease case. Minamata victim launched numerous legal, legal action against Chizo Corporation, the Japanese government, and the Kumamoto Prefecture. A group of Minamata victims filed a lawsuit in 1969 against Chizo, alleging 
corporate negligent. The court ultimately ruled in favor of the plaintiff and ordered Chiso to put compensation to the victim. As the number of victims continued to increase, the Japanese government adopted a certification process whereby people were officially certified as suffering from Minamata disease based on characteristic combination of symptoms. A former president of Chiso and supervisor of the Minamata factory faced criminal proceedings in 1979 for causing death and severely harm, and they were sentenced to years in prison. In 1995, the Japanese government proposed a settlement plan to those who had not been certified with Minamata disease in exchange for them dropping a related litigation. Many victims accepted this settlement, except for the Minamata Disease Cancer Patient Association. In 1982, the association sued Chiso Corporation, the Japanese government, and Komoto Prefecture demanding recognition as a Minamata disease victim and compensation for the damage that they have suffered. The Osaka District Court in July 1994 ruled that neither the government nor the prefecture was responsible, responsible for the damage to the victim. The plaintiffs appealed this decision on, in Osaka High Court, which overturned the lower court's decision and found that the defendant had failed to exercise the regulatory authority as required by water quality legislation and the fisheries coordination regulation of Komoto Prefecture. In April 2010, the Japanese government approved a measure to provide a composition to uncertified sufferers of Minamata disease. This measure will allow for a lump sum payment to these uncertified sufferers who have not joined a lawsuit against the government or TISO. On 31st March 2014, the Komoto District Court ordered the state, the Komoto Prefecture, the government and TISO to pay 106 million in damage to three uncertified sufferers who sued them. The strategy to reduce or eliminate Minamata disease. The first one is closing down of the pollutant risk sources. All the pollutant sources has been shut down and closing down. After that, the second one is effluent control. In 1969, the drainage of the factory effluent containing methamercury to Minamata was regulated. The third one is restoration of the environment. Methamercury remained as a consideration concentration in the bottom sediment of related water area even after discharge of the methamercury compound was stopped. In order to remove this bottom sediment from 1974 to 1990, Komoto Prefecture carried out the project for dealing with about 1.5 million cubic meters of bottom sediment of Minamata that contain mercury more than the removal standard by means of dredging and landfill. The next one is restraint on intake on fish and shellfish. In the area around Minamata Bay in 1956, when it became clear that intake of fish and shellfish may be the cause of the disease, the control of intake of fish and shellfish taken from Minamata Bay and safe restraint of food by the fishing cooperative uh, started by guidance and Komoto Prefecture. Transition in coordination of pollution. In the area of around Minamata Bay and the Agano River Basin, until now, various types of investigation about water quality, bottom sediment fish and shellfish, hair sample, etc. have been carried out with respect to environmental policy. As a result, it is thought that continuous methamercury exposure at a level which could cause Minamata disease existed until no later than 1968 in the area around Minamata Bay and until no later than 1965 in the Agano River Basin and that from the time there has not been such exposure that could lead to the occurrence of Minamata disease. Lesson learned from Minamata disease in Japan. Japan. Having experienced massive damage due to Minamata disease, the government, industry, and citizens in Japan has been collectively engaged in mercury management and performed their own specific role. The Japan Comprehensive Mercury Control measure over its life cycle the roles that each of the stakeholders has played in implementing that measure. Even taking historical and social condition at the time into consideration, the government failure to prevent harmful impact on human health from increasing due to not taking strict measure again the responsible company for a long time in view of the provision of the minamata convention on mercury concerning that reduction of mercury trade mercury temporary storage and appropriate management of mercury waste the japanese government is going to make consideration on the design of a suitable mechanism concerning mercury collection storage and disposal strategy to prevent this issue from happening in malaysia this one, the first one is involving of all parties, including government, NGO, industry, and also the society. The health sector play a crucial role in the development of the prevention program with the identification of the health effect and source of exposure of mercury. 
assessment of the disease burden, setting the guidelines such as the tolerable dietary intake in food and guideline value in drinking water and air as well as developing tools for action and guidance. The third one is the enforcement and awareness program, especially for the recycling program and the skid waste management. The fourth one is the enactment of regulation. Many regulation has been enacted by the government of Malaysia in order to prevent the same thing happen in Malaysia, such as the guideline on mercury management in oil and gas industry, enacted by the DOSH. The second one <coughs> is the requirement or regulation enacted by the Department of Environmental Malaysia, such as the <coughs> Environmental Regulation 2009, Schedule Waste Management 2015. So the conclusion, mercury is a toxic to human. There is no standard cure for mercury poisoning. So it is best to avoid exposure to high amount of mercury when possible. Effort, effort by manufacturer or mercury containing product, government program and solid waste management facility have significantly reduced mercury entering the environment from product that contain it. Water and food are essential to life and therefore invaluable, invaluable and that household and the industry waste should not be allowed to destroy the environment. Minamata disease also tell us to coexist with nature based on the idea that we are living thanks to nature, to think about the relation among people, river and the sea, to think about the food which is safe, to decrease home and industry waste and to grapple with recycling. The last one is to tackle global problems. This is the reference and that's all for my presentation. Thank you.